The anime begins with our short ugly red head boy Tayo Asano, remembering that fateful accident where he learned two things. You don't realize what's important to you until it's gone, and that it's very easy to lose. Turns out, he lost his parents and his brother in a car accident. At the funeral, he cries over his loss with his childhood friend, Matsuni Yosakura. This scared Asano even though he bonded with something precious to him. He was afraid of losing Matsumi too. Matsumi realizes how troubled he is and holds his hand to support him in this important moment. Later in class, some classmates invite Asano to hang out with them, but he rejects them because he doesn't feel well. They feel bad about being rejected again. They mention they've been in the same class for a month and want to spend time together. However, they realize it's best to stop because Asano is so nervous he faints. Asano thinks maybe it's because it's his first time responding to them. He's not shy, he's happy they invited him, but he still can't get over his past. Mutsumi brings lunch for both of them because she knows he hasn't been eating well. Other kids spy on them from afar, curious why Mutsumi, the school idol, would do that. They get jealous of Asano. Mutsumi sees he's alone again and worries he might spend the rest of his life like this. She asks him who she is to talk, considering she supposedly rejected the handsome, popular Tanaka from the third year who is also the captain of the soccer team. Matsumi tells him not to worry about her and to move on, or his parents will be sad. He needs to work on his communication skills, so she feeds him herself. But just as they try, the vice principal Kaiwa Kairo appears out of nowhere and takes a bite. Matsumi asks Kaiwa Kairo why he's not supposed to be on a business trip overseas for a conference. But he explains that he missed his lunches a lot. So, he changed his schedule to come home faster. Before leaving, he tells Asano to go to his office after classes, although he doesn't give any reason. Later, while walking down the hallway, Asano starts to remember the accident. Since that day, he's been afraid to connect with people, something he still can't overcome. When he gets to the office, the principal sits very close to him to show him his beloved secret collection of photos of Matsumi. Asano thinks he's a lost case due to his obsession, having photos of Matsumi even when she was just five or six years old. Wondering why a teacher has this kind of photos of a student Kaiwa Kairo suspiciously says he's been watching over Matsumi from the shadows all this time because she's so beautiful to protect her from all the undesirables. He's been constantly watching over her without rest. That third year guy Tanaka was quite annoying to her yesterday, but when he kindly asked him to stay away from Matsumi, he willingly agreed. At that moment, he also shows him a video where he torments him to force him to stay away definitively, which shocks Asano. Kaiwa Kairo feels envy towards him for being able to receive those homemade lunches from Matsumi. Suddenly, he takes out a knife from his sleeve and puts it near Asano's neck, telling him he's been looking the other way because he's her childhood friend, but things have changed and that won't be possible anymore. Asano's voice can't come out in this terrifying situation and his legs are frozen with fear. At that moment, a girl enters through the window and triggers a light bomb, taking advantage of the flash to take Asano away from there. When Asano wakes up, the first thing he sees is Matsumi and a bunch of people he doesn't know. Panicked, he backs away, but Matsumi tries to calm him down with her presence. Then, she introduces him to everyone who turn out to be her siblings. First, there's her older sister Futaba, then her older brother Shinzo, her older sister Shin, her brother Kingo, and finally Nanao. Although there's also their guardian Goliath, and as you can see, they are a family of spies, sighing over how hard it was to keep their mouths shut for over 10 years. Asano asks them to wait because he can't process this, as if they were saying they're a family of vegetable sellers. Matsumi thinks that instead of eggplants and radishes, they deal with weapons and intelligence, which is more or less the same. But Asano doesn't understand that, thinking they're joking, and that the gun on the table is just a toy. But when he takes it and shoots upwards, he realizes it's indeed a real weapon, trembling in fear. They explain to him that contrary to what's depicted in books and movies, being a spy is a common job. Lately, there's been an increase in cheap public service spies, so as freelancers, they can't compete. Shin trusts they'll be fine because they top the review sites with 4-8 stars, which Asano sees as a massive leak of information. Kengo also mentions they have their brother Kaiwa Kairo to boost popularity, whom Asano recognizes as the vice principal who almost killed him. They explain that he's actually the eldest son of the Yosakura family. Kaiwa Kairo Yosakura is flawed as a person, but excels in combat power and intelligence, being the best spy in the family. 
He chose Asano as a target because they received information about someone conspiring to kill Matsumi, obtained from a social media post. Asano is surprised they have so many followers. Futaba explains that years ago, during a certain incident, Matsumi suffered a near-fatal injury because of Kaiwa Kairo, and that white hair is a remnant of the stress from that accident. Since then, his guilt has made him obsess over Matsumi abnormally. He changed his name and job to watch over her and meddle in everything from her daily life to her personal connections, becoming a sort of protective monster despite his hatred. Asano always gave him a pass as Matsumi's childhood friend, but now there's a reason to get rid of him. At that moment, an alert sounds, indicating that Kaiwa Kairo has returned to the house. Futaba assumes he's come to eliminate Asano. Sion mentions that all the doors leading to the room are closed, and Sion has set up all the traps they have at hand. Everyone prepares to beat him up. Futaba takes off her gloves to fight barehanded. They mention that the odds aren't in their favor, even with five against one. The previous success rate in frontal confrontations is only 30%. There's also a 32% chance that one of them will need six months of recovery, and a 25% chance that the house will catch fire. Asano feels that all of this is his fault, but they make him see that it has always been a family problem. Futaba approaches Asano to explain that there's only one way for him to survive. He has to marry Matsumi. If he marries into their family according to their only rule of not killing family members, his life can at least be spared. He just has to exchange rings to marry into the Yosakura family. This cherry blossom ring is double-banded, and when you give half to your spouse, your marriage becomes official. Even Kaiwa Kairo isn't dumb enough to break such a strict rule, and they believe it's a good opportunity for Asano to finally overcome his fixation on his sister. Reflecting on this, what Asano ends up remembering is his lost family, still affected by it. Matsumi, on the other hand, responds with a no, blaming herself to Futaba's awareness of trying to take care of them, but must realize that Asano has lost his family. Even now, he can't talk to people or sleep because he's still processing their loss. No one knows better than Asano how painful that is, so asking him so casually to join their family would be too cruel. Kaiwa Kairo feels bad that they're leaving him out, appearing out of nowhere right in the middle of everyone. Then he tells Shinzo that evading his traps was a hassle, so he destroyed them all. Futaba approaches to warn him one last time to stay away from them. He refuses, as he has no guarantee that he's harmless, and for the good of everyone's safety until proven otherwise. That's his way of doing things since they can't come to an agreement. Futaba grabs him by his tie to make use of her incredible strength, spinning him in the air and slamming him into the sofa. Shinzo holds him with his robotic extensions, while Nanao gives him a tremendous punch with her normal strength. But Kaiwa Kairo counters his attack with his threads, executing an area attack that sends both of them flying. Futaba explains to Senyu that this is Kaiwa Kairo's special weapon, the Steel Spider. Matsumi tells them they'll buy some time, so they need to take Asano and run. After she finishes speaking, Futaba launches herself directly at Kaiwa Kairo, deflecting his threads with multiple blows from her palms. However, she's suddenly caught from the sides and lifted to the ceiling to be captured. Kengo takes them both away from there, while Shin deploys his drones to unload all their ammunition against his older brother. Matsumi tells Asano to hide and not come out no matter what happens, placing him behind a picture with a perfect hiding spot. Shortly after, Kaiwa Kairo arrives and asks his dear sister to come back with him. She obeys, but as he approaches her, she pulls out a gun and commands Goliath to attack him. He reacts quickly, using his special weapon to capture the animal and her hands. He praises Kengo for his incredible disguise, removing his mask to reveal his face, but he realizes that Asano is actually Matsumi. He demands to know where she's hidden Asano, while Asano watches through the hole, unsure of what to do. Matsumi asks Kaiwa Kairo to end this nonsense, as Asano isn't trying to kill her, reminding him of all the suffering he went through because of what happened. After much insistence, Kaiwa Kairo agrees to comply, but on the condition that she never leaves the house again because he doesn't want her to encounter undesirable people, agreeing to protect her no matter the pain. As he talks about this, he approaches her and ends up hugging her, allowing himself to be stabbed by the knife she holds at that moment. This greatly frightens Matsumi, seeing his strong obsession with her. She agrees to comply, having no other choice, much to the surprise of both. Asano comes out of his hiding place to ask him to leave her alone, understanding that this guy is like him, afraid of losing what is valuable to him. 
But making the person he wants to protect see them in that way is something he can't accept. That's why he tells Mutsumi to go along with Futaba's proposal. Futaba, no longer afraid, approaches him and asks him to accept that decision. Moreover, now he must work on teaching Asano how to protect Mutsumi. Mutsumi throws her arms around him very happy, while Kaiwa Kairo is left more than surprised, unsure of what to do next. Then the others enter the room, and Futaba approaches him to ask him to accept that decision. Moreover, now he must work on teaching Asano how to protect Mutsumi. Later, Asano stayed in his room, thinking about everything that happened before leaving the Yosakura mansion. He saw that Kaiokairo wasn't doing well, despite assurances not to worry about him from Futaba. Futaba even mentioned wanting to confront Kaiokairo with reality until he couldn't ignore it anymore. Lastly, Mutsumi took Asano's hand and thanked him for what he had done. The next day, Asano woke up to find Kaiokairo holding a sharp knife, trying to stab him out of nowhere. Asano dodged just in time, and Kaiokairo explained it was a traditional Yosakura family wake-up call, part of their training. Despite not believing they were lying, Asano felt Kaiokairo was genuinely trying to kill him. Kaiokairo then moved on to the next step, the Yosakura family's traditional morning exercises using steel threads. Mutsumi prepared lunch for Asano, but when she brought it to his room, they found Kaiokairo using the threads to try to make Asano dance in the air. This made Mutsumi nervous, and they hurriedly left the room when they saw the time. Shortly after, an explosive detonated, destroying the house. Kaiokairo revealed the house was rigged with bombs and promised to explain everything to Asano later. He also postponed their conflict to discuss the Yosakura family's mission, which is to protect Mutsumi Yosakura above all else. They then got into a car, and Kaiokairo mentioned receiving a report from Shinso about finding a fragment of what he believed was a time bomb in the kitchen, targeting Mutsumi. Information spreads like wildfire in this industry, so it's no secret that Asano is connected to it. Kaiokairo shows him the posts where he himself announced that his sister got married. When Asano asks why Mutsumi would be attacked, Kaiokairo explains that it's simple. Mutsumi is the tenth head of the Yosakura family. The Yosakura family's lineage traces back to Edo period ninjas and has produced generations of descendants with superhuman abilities. However, among them, there has always been an ordinary person known as the head. Despite lacking superhuman powers like the rest of the family, the head's descendants are raised as typical superhumans of the Yosakura lineage and can inherit incredible talents that skip a generation. The family members armed with these talents protect the head, who passes them down. This is how the Yosakura have thrived so far. In other words, since Mutsumi is the head, she is the rightful leader of them all and the lifeline of the Yosakura. Even though her siblings don't care about the lineage and want Mutsumi to live her own life, Mutsumi remembers they've discussed this repeatedly, as they're all risking their lives for the sake of the family business. So, she must fulfill her own mission as the head. Kaiokairo continues explaining that eventually, Mutsumi will have to make her debut in the underworld as the leader of the Yosakura. That's why her current mission is to gain recognition in the ordinary world. However, it also means that Mutsumi will be exposed to all kinds of villains. While discussing this, armed individuals start chasing them from behind, and one of them fires a missile launcher, narrowly missing the car. They then shoot at the vehicle, but Kaiokairo assures Asano not to worry since the car is bulletproof. He speeds up the car with a snap of his fingers, telling the driver to be gentle as he doesn't want to spill his tea. Mutsumi tries to calm Asano, saying they can trust Goliath to handle this. Turns out, their pet is the one driving, which unsettles Asano even more. In the chaos, they end up spilling Kaiokairo's tea, prompting him to step out of the car and block the bullets with his steel threads. At that moment, a missile is fired at them, but Kaiokairo shatters it instantly. Right after that, he blocks the enemy's view with a huge wall from his lethal weapon, which shatters their vehicles in an instant long-range attack. Returning to the car, Kaiokairo tells Asano that this is the family mission in which he must also participate. Since Asano has become a member of the Yosakura family, he also has the duty to protect Mutsumi. For this purpose, Kaiokairo will instill in him the fundamentals of espionage, and this is his first mission, to protect Mutsumi from assassins throughout the day. When they arrive at class, Asano starts to thoroughly check the entire classroom, showing aggression when his classmates greet him. Before that, Kairo gives him a gun, telling him not to worry because if he kills any of them, they'll cover it up, so he's free to shoot. However, Asano is uncomfortable with all of this, while Mutsumi asks him to stop bothering Asano. She says a firearm wouldn't be helpful since Asano is always like a bomb, so it wouldn't be useful. After that, Kaiokairo indicates that Asano must protect Mutsumi from this guy on social media called Alias Tamiya, who's gained some reputation as a bomber. His bombs are top-notch, and he's been asked to help sabotage a terrorist group. 
Asano wonders why, if he's helping them, they're being targeted. Kaiokairo explains that in the world of spies, enemies and allies switch sides quickly, depending on money and conditions. The only one you can trust is yourself, but even that's not always guaranteed. Moreover, Tamaya is heavily reliant on social media lately, posting many nonsensical poems, but revealing details about his work, goals, and progress. They'd like to accompany them, but Tamiya has to rescue a large number of hostages. Then Kaiokairo warns Asano not to let his guard down because this guy has a twisted nature. After playing with him for a few rounds with lighter bombs, he finishes it with one of those specialized bombs he's so proud of. It's Tamiya's style, and he's announced that there are three bombs. One of them is the bomb that demolished their house, leaving two others. Asano doesn't care if he gets blown to pieces. He must protect Matsumi until she returns from work, and if she even gets a scratch, he'll make whoever did it regret being born. Back in the present, Asano remains vigilant, still finding nothing suspicious despite the day passing without incident. While in sports class, he assumes that Tamiya must have already infiltrated the school. Suddenly, they see on social media that this bomber has posted about placing the second bomb, which alarms them. Just then, he gets hit in the face with a ball, but quickly gets up when he sees someone suspicious entering the infirmary. When he tries to open the door, he's startled when the nurse speaks to him from behind. Asano brushes it off and leaves, while she smiles strangely. On the other hand, Matsumi keeps herself occupied chatting with her classmates, who tell her rumors of ghost sightings near the school. Asano sits on the classroom floor, reading Tamaya's latest post about placing the final bomb. He also reflects on how observant Matsumi has been today, noticing things like her refusal to eat the school food or how she's always with someone, trying her best not to be alone. She must have learned to do all that without thinking to protect herself all this time, fighting her own destiny alone. At that moment, his classmates approach to give him chocolate and apologize for the earlier incident. Asano eats it without any issue, surprising them as it's unusual for him. It reminds him of his insecurity, triggering those bouts of shyness he used to have. With difficulty, he says that for the sake of his wife, he can't afford to faint, which he ends up doing later. He wakes up in the vice principal's office with Matsumi. She apologizes for this, explaining that the infirmary was closed, and there was no other place for her to rest. Right then, Asano asks Matsumi if she's sure he's the right one for her, considering he's just a childhood friend who knew nothing about her being from a spy family, let alone being the head of that family. Despite all that, she stayed by his side, even though her life was constantly in danger. When they got married, he said without thinking that he wanted to protect her, but she interrupts him and says he's being very negative. She clarifies that it wasn't him who chose her, it was she who wanted him. Despite marrying into a crazy spy family, and with the possibility of his girlfriend dying at any moment, anyone would agree that marriage was out of the question. But she's always wanted him to be her husband, so she thanks him for marrying her. Asano smiles at her joy, but lying on his back, he notices a bomb on the ceiling, which explodes seconds later. Suddenly, we see Kengo and Nanao there, as Kengo was disguised as the nurse Asano saw earlier. Shin monitors the explosion with a drone and instructs Kengo to join them immediately. In the end, Asano and Mutsumi are safe thanks to their quick reaction. Asano wonders how the bomber knew they'd be there, as they just entered that room by chance. Thinking about it, he realizes the truth. They were lured to that office, and Tamiya knew exactly what moves they would make. Afterward, he removes part of his clothes, confirming he has a bomb attached, assuming it was during gym class. He concludes that this was planned from the beginning, intentionally announcing his moves to prevent him from leaving Mutsumi and turning him into the bomb that would kill her. Since the exit is blocked by debris, he jumps through the hole in the wall to avoid the explosion. In mid-air, he's stopped by Kaiokairo's steel threads, who mentions it's good that he finished the job early. He explains that this is Tamaya's miniature bomb. It has a tiny spark, but a big impact, with two flaws. It takes time to activate as it recharges using the target's body heat, and it can be deactivated with a single cable due to its simple design. Kaiokairo is impressed that Asano didn't realize this and congratulates him on his good work. He advises him that in this world, where even he should doubt himself, there's one thing he can trust, his family. He would love to kill him, but even if he has to sacrifice himself, he'll never let him die. So, he advises him to work hard as if his life depended on it for the sake of his beloved Matsumi. Minutes later, the siblings arrive, where Shinso drops Tamiya to the ground. Tamiya asks Kaiokairo for some mercy, but he immediately rejects his request. The next thing he does is tie him up with his threads and throw him far into the air. It's seen that he has one of his bombs in his clothes, which creates a beautiful colorful explosion. Asano sees Tamiya's profile writing in his last moments that he's about to die, which seems a bit strange. 
Matsumi notices this and moves her finger to like that post. As night falls, Asano arrives at the Yosekira mansion, thanking Kayokairo for taking him in. However, Kayokairo asks why he's there. Matsumi reminds him that Asano's house is a mess after that bomb explosion, and it's not his concern. Besides, Asano and she are husband and wife, which greatly annoys Kayokairo, touching a nerve within him. There, he tells them that the beds in the house are the most uncomfortable, so comfortable that maybe Asano won't wake up. He advises Asano to watch his back, and with some fear, Asano accepts that warning. Bringing the episode to an end.